Now, just talking about the uh, environment, you know, you're in East Africa, and obviously we had uh, the situation in South Sudan, and I was listening to you in your presentation when you made the results. You were very optimistic about right. South Sudan right. and, the, and a path back to stability. Correct. And when I looked at the numbers, it also was pretty impressive. You gained market share right. and profitability right. in, in that region. And Burundi as well, where the chairman said, you know, off a low base, but look at the right. uh, up 200% or something. So tell me, Joshua, a lot of these companies have been reporting and found South Sudan very difficult to operate in, right? There have been some quite big hits that have come out of there. And if you went to somebody and said, Burundi, I grew my business 200%, people say, how did Joshua do that? So what exactly would you characterize what's happened in the region and why? Is someone like yourself at KCB able to pilot through this where Correct. others are struggling? So, so we, we take a very different view in the way we go into our businesses. We tend to connect with the different uh, you know, sectors of the economy that we operate in. So let me give you, and these two countries are very different, Ali yes. Khan. Sometimes it's very easy for someone looking at Nairobi and saying, well, Burundi should be this, South Sudan should be this. We work in the country, we operate, we have staff, we have businesses in the country. Now, Burundi. The challenges for us we see is despite the difficulties, mm. our customers are experiencing more growth in the last quarter of last year. Mm. So it's a different experience, you know, because customers did leave into Uganda, they did leave into Tanzania, and most of those customers are now going back. Mm. Yeah. If you look at our business, we haven't stopped a single day our yes. business operation in Burundi. Yes. Correct? We have got six branches, you know, there's five branches last year, going to six this year, and that has gone extremely strong for our businesses. What I see is the conviction of individuals in the country of Burundi to be able to get tomorrow and build a better, a better business. So that's for me, I would say, has been, it's not a bigger size, but growing by 200% last year mm. was quite a pleasant surprise uh, in, in Burundi. Mm. South Sudan is a little bit more different. Mm. We grew much faster, you know, build up market share, grew up market share to more or less 60%. Yes. But I would say the difficulties we see is that the devaluation was one of the areas that we have always been anticipating a devaluation of the currency. In fact, we have been proponents yes. of freeing the exchange rate. Oh, because really? you can, yeah, Absolutely. Yes, yes. Because ultimately, you're going to leave free market determine where the exchange rate can be. Because the, this, the fixed rate was not realistic yes. in the market. And we've seen oil production drop, economic activity. But two things have happened in that country. We've seen non-oil revenues grow up significantly to almost 25 30 25%. What period is that? Happening? So in the last 2 years mm. we've seen a lot of focus you know we've been collecting as a bank to be able to enable government to collect non oil revenues mm. introduce some taxation they never had before. Mm. So those are areas in my view that are being revisited and they're very rudimentary actually. In my view if that business is if that area is being built on you can increase the size. Yes. Now the future looks optimistic because we do believe that South Sudan is a tiger that's gonna get up. Mm. Today, the activities are the bare minimum. So whether it is infrastructure, energy, ed there is no sector you can look at today, agriculture, tourism. And we've been following very closely the peace process. Yes. And we are confident when that is resolved, Ali Khan, you you'll that will find be businesses getting back. So businesses which have come out of South Sudan have had this difficulty because they had a short-term view. Mm. So you know, we are going in here. And, and let, me, let me be honest that these different businesses, they are businesses that have stayed firm. We see businesses from Egypt, businesses um, from... Uh, in South Sudan. Yes, from a re a re not a rich, but businesses have come in from, especially the north of Africa mm. and the Middle East, yes. have continued to co invest mm. in South Sudan. What we have seen businesses from this part, of, and now they are part, I'm very excited actually that they are part of the ESC. Yes, yes, because that was a big move. It's a big, mm. bold move. Mm. I mean, the entire leadership of ESC could not admit South Sudan into our own community yes. if there wasn't the potential and the centricity of the connectivity we face. Yes. That's for me is the exciting mm. part. So we see business will get back. It's actually quite normal. Mm. You see business, despite the currency devaluation and increases in the price of goods and services, I am quite bullish yes. that with the peace process coming in. And I have spoken to the two principals myself. Yes. You have, have yes, you? Yes, yes. So and do you feel yes. that they get it now? That They, want they, they are very committed themselves mm. in getting the process realized. Mm. Uh, it's not always easy to manage the political process. But as individuals, they are absolutely committed in getting the country forward. They see the loss for the last uh, tw 25 to, f to 30 months, yes. and they are ready to take off. So this year, 2016, may start very low because of a huge impact on the exchange rate devaluation. Yes. But as we go into the third quarter, fourth quarter, and 2017, mm -hmm. we're going to be in a very exciting position in South Sudan. Mm -hmm.